Hi friends, welcome to Project Lead the Way. It's Friday, the day before spring break. I'm glad to see you. So I'm gonna walk you through our expectations for tracing a bitmap. So you can see in classroom uh, that today I want you to um, make another Inkscape practice file and we're gonna trace a bitmap and make an SVG. When I say that, this is what I mean. So here I am in our Inkscape tutorial place. A bitmap is an image that is pixelated. So you just see all these little boxes around um, the edges here. That's a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG. We don't want that. We want a vector image. That's what we have to work with to work with the laser cutter. So we want to change one of these to one of these. In Classroom, I have shared a bitmap with you. It is a JPEG. This is a JPEG. This is a JPEG. I want you to download that to your computer. You can right click on it and save the image as. Pay attention to where you're putting it. I'm putting mine on my desktop. Usually if you just auto download something, it'll go to your download folder, um, but I'm gonna put mine on my desktop. It's already there, but I'll just do it again. It's gonna download to your machine. And then we are going to open up Inkscape. Right now, there's some work in here that I just did a little while ago, so I'm going to delete that off. Once Inkscape is open, what we want to do is bring in this hand-drawn image, right? So I drew that little heart. Doop, doop. I took a picture of it. I shared it with you. And now we're going to bring that into Inkscape and work with it. Now, you can do this and will be doing this with your own art and your own drawings. That's the idea. To bring it in, we click File, Import and then we find the image. This box will come up. All of these settings are perfectly fine. We click OK, and here it is. Once our image is in here, we can already do some things with it. I can change its height, change its width, make it little teeny tiny, or make it real big. But I want you to notice, I'm clicking the plus button on my keyboard to zoom in. If I zoom way in, can you see that this is a bitmap? This is pixelated on the edge. So that means the laser cutter can't read it. It doesn't know what that is. It also means I can't do that much with it in here other than like mess transform it a little bit. So I want to make this a um, SVG. I'm gonna be sure that it's selected. If I don't have it selected, it's not gonna work. I've got a B-shirt selected, so I'm looking for these arrows. I'm going to click Path, Trace Bitmap. Now, it doesn't look like anything happened on my computer, but it did. I'm going to put myself over here. And over here on the side, my Trace Bitmap screen hid. For some of you, this window just popped right up like magic. But if you didn't see it, look over here on the side. It might be hidden. That's kind of the minimized section on Inkscape, right? So um, I'm looking at this. I'm clicking that live preview. You might have a blank screen and need to click live preview to see what you've made. And I can mess with the threshold settings. If I go to zero, I've got all white. If I go to one, I have all black. So what we're doing is we're messing with the brightness cutoff, the amount of light that Inkscape is letting kind of onto this image. Usually it's somewhere in the middle, like right there. But if you kind of bring an image in and you don't have a real clean picture um, or you don't have good lighting, sometimes you'll get a bit of a mess like this. So we play with these brightness settings to get it as close to clean as we can. We click OK one time. Now you might have noticed that my heart got darker and it's because when we trace a bitmap, it goes right on top of the other image. Look, it's right here. So now I can be done with this. I don't click OK again, or it just wants to keep tracing things. I can click Close. I'm finished. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I want you to see that now I have a beautiful, fun, clean uh, SVG. If I zoom in, it doesn't matter how close I get, I'm not going to get a pixelated line. And that's because a scalable vector graphic doesn't use pixels to have information, it uses nodes. This button under the select tool is called Edit Paths by Nodes. It's my favorite button in Inkscape, I love it so much. Once I have this button selected, 
I can do so many things to my um, piece of art. I can select a bunch of stuff. I can move things around. I can say, hey, I don't really want that dot there. That wasn't a great idea. I'm going to delete that. Um, if I don't like something that I do, I can just control Z, undo back to the last image. If I look up at those set of nodes and I think those are kind of bumpy, I might just delete them. I might decide that I want my heart to do something very, very different than it did in the past. So any scalable vector graphic that you create, you can really manipulate and control with this button right here. A new toolbar appears and we'll be learning what all these do like down the road. Um, but this is a scalable vector graphic. This is an SVG. This is beautiful and makes me happy. To get it ready for the laser cutter, like we did with some stuff yesterday, we would open the fill and stroke. If nothing happens, check and see, is it hiding? Mine was hiding. No fill. Yes, a stroke line. Um, and that stroke style should be 0 0.01 inches. All right. And then this is what we need to laser cut. The laser can see this and it could cut this into wood or paper or felt or, you know, etch it onto glass. But the laser can't see this. It doesn't know how to read that. It does know how to read this. Now you're singing like a laser song. So what do I want you to do today? I want you to trace the bitmap of the heart that I shared with you. Um, and at a bare minimum, get it looking like this and a screenshot of it. If you have the resources available, I'd love for you to do your own drawing, do your own photograph of that drawing, and then import that and bring it into Inkscape as well and trace that bitmap. So you'll take screenshots of this work and you'll add it to Google Classroom by three o'clock today. Thank you.